Only the Board B Equality Mark ensures you know where your food comes from because it's independently checked at every stage. Today I'm going to visit DCU's impressive sports academy which looks after the university's elite GEA players and athletes and I want to show you two great lamb dishes a one tray Greek lamb messe and a seared lamb fillet perfect for a special occasion but first a healthy version of the ever popular chicken goujons We all enjoy chicken goujons and this recipe is a very healthy, quick recipe because I'm going to bake the chicken in the oven. But in the crumbs, I'm going to add in some cashew nuts and also some coconut. Now, with the chicken goujons, I'm going to prepare two chicken breasts. But I recommend at home, you get maybe six or eight chicken breasts. And what you do is you crumb them and then you can freeze them. So the first thing we need to do is to make the crust. I'm using these Paco crumbs, which are dried bread crumbs. Every supermarket has them. If you have bread that's a couple of days old, you can make your own, drying it in the oven at 100 degrees for about maybe five, 10 minutes, and then just whiz it up. So it's a great thing to have in your cupboard, Paco bread crumbs. They're lovely, they're dried, and they add great texture. Cashew nuts, I just simply toasted them, or roasted them, whatever you want, them, on a dry pan, in the oven. Always have a little jar of them, because they're lovely in salads, but they're delicious in the actual crumbs. So I'm gonna put in these, and then we have some flaked coconut. Now, of course, if you have a nut allergy, what I would suggest is you use some herbs in this. A little bit of lemon zest would work really well. And you could put different spices, mild curry powder, chili powder, and sesame seeds would work really well in this also. Blend all this together. I want to leave a little bit of texture. And then I'm going to just sprinkle it into a tray, which I have ready here. So kind of spread them. So you can see roughly chopped cashew nuts. You have the coconut there. Now we're going to talk about the chicken. Chicken, as you know, is a very lean meat. It's a very good value. This is quality assured Irish chicken. So it's great flavor. I'm going to trim these into what we call goujons. Cut them kind of lengthways. Try and cut them the same thickness because then they'll cook uh, evenly, so they will. So I'm just using a good sharp knife and cutting it into long thin strips like this. Now I've just removed the little inner fillet, which is underneath the chicken. You can just take that off and you can crumb that also. But I think a dish like this is a great dish to get your children involved. Let the kids dip it in flour, a little bit of egg and bread crumbs. That's where I got my love of cooking, cooking with my mother. So if you start them young, they'll appreciate what goes into food. We're gonna just put into some flour. I'm gonna show you the technique which we call tapane. We have plain flour, one egg with a little bit of milk and then our bread crumbs. Keep one hand just in the flour and one hand is going to be in the egg wash. The flour keeps the moisture in the chicken, but also it helps the egg stick. One quality assured egg, a little bit of milk, just whip it up. I usually hand blend it, I think it's easier. Or use a fork if you want. I'm going to bake them off in the oven on a tray. So I have a tray lined with parchment paper, which is a non-stick silicone paper. The only reason I have the spoon on it so that it doesn't blow away here. So you keep one hand dry and one hand wet. So one hand for the egg wash and then your other hand here and then just simply toss this over and then just press it in like that. Shake it off, and that's our beautiful crumbed goujon. Sit them on the tray, and if you do make your own goujons, you know exactly what goes into them. Good quality chicken, your crumbs there with lots of different textures and flavors, and the fact that we're baking them in the oven, it's a much healthier way of cooking them rather than deep frying them. So I have extra crumbs. I've had raw chicken in it, so what I would do with this is put them in a little bag, pop them into the freezer, just label them. Now, wash your hands, especially after handling raw meat. With the chicken, I'm gonna bake that off in the oven in a few minutes. Spray it with this. It's an olive oil spray, which is a great thing to have in your kitchen, and it's very low in calories. So you just simply spray it. This'll keep it nice and moist and give it a nice little bit of color. Well, that's my gas blowing there. I'm gonna show you how to make a lovely salsa with this, and this is a mango. There's some lime in it and also a little bit of red onion. It's a very, very simple salsa. So the first thing I'm gonna do is dice my onion, cut this really nice and fine. Usually red onions, they're nice and sweet and there's a nice little bit of tartness and tanginess from this and the lime juice will slightly soften them and a little bit of oil in this. That's all that goes into it. 
Very, very simple. Next ingredient is mango. You slice this. And then you have the flat stone here. So the best way to do it is to keep it flat, just to be safe, keep my hand on it. And then just hold it up and just slice that off. Cut it like this into a quarter, putting a little bit of pressure at the point of the knife and remove the skin. And just watch yourself when you're getting near the end, move your fingers. So I'm gonna slice this, everyone, and then we're gonna dice this. Put the knife on the board and chop it like this. Scoop it up and into the bowl with the red onion. And you can use pineapple instead, but mango's lovely, especially when it's lovely and ripe. Before I finish it off, I'm just going to blanch off these lovely asparagus tips. I have a saucepan of boiling water, just literally one minute, gonna go in and then I'm gonna refresh them underneath cold. I have a little bit of iced water over here. Literally let them cook for one minute, so don't overcook them. You wanna keep all the nutrients and the goodness in there. While they're on cooking, I can finish off my salsa. Grate a little bit of the zest, and then we're gonna put some of the juice, cut it in half should be lovely and refreshing. You have the sweetness from the mango, a little bit of texture from the onion, and then you have the sharpness from the lime. It works really good. Now I'm gonna put some plain rapeseed oil, but what I would do if I was doing this at home sometimes, you can put chili rapeseed oil into it, which is gorgeous. So just drizzle this in here, touch of salt, and then a little bit of black pepper. And I'm gonna finish this with fresh coriander. If you don't have coriander, you don't like it, basil works really good with this. Pick this and actually just tear it in here. I'm just afraid of it blowing away. Stalks and all, they're very soft, just near the top of the little leaves, and mix this through. And that's our salsa done. Also, what's lovely in this, if you roast or get a roasted red pepper, you can buy them and just remove any of the seeds and any of the kind of shard outside skin and put them in there. It's really good with this. So let's have a little look at our asparagus. Switch that off, and then that goes into your ice water. This is what you call refreshing. Gonna let them sit there for a minute. And what I need to do now, is this chicken needs to go into the oven at 180 for about 12 to 15 minutes until it's just cooked through and golden brown. When you're deep frying it, it'll obviously get a much darker color than this, but I prefer baking them like this. It's healthier, the texture, you're getting the true flavor of the chicken and you're getting the lovely texture from the crumbs. Before I cut into the chicken, I'm gonna just prepare the salad. So a little bit of baby gem, so just arrange that. Then for a little bit of color, but also a little bit of sharpness, this is radishico. And you can actually cook this so you can. You can put it onto a barbecue and char grill it. It's quite a bitter salad. So if you like those kind of flavors, which I do, I think it works really, really well in the salad. This time I think I'm gonna shred this. So, Presentation is important, but even if you just serve the chicken goujons, just with a spoonful of that, and maybe some potato wedge or something like that done in the oven, it's absolutely delicious. So what I've done with the asparagus, lift them out of the water, put them onto some kitchen paper, and that will absorb any excess water. Tuck them in underneath the salad leaves. So about, you know, four or five asparagus tips is more than enough in this. Now, our chicken. Let's get one of them here. We're gonna cut them. So just cut them at an angle. You can see they're beautifully cooked through and they're moist. Arrange these around the salad. So I think about four of these is more than enough. And then spoon over the salsa. So it's lovely and fresh and fragrant. And this salsa will keep for a couple of days in your fridge, it's so delicious. These are alfaya little bean sprouts, okay, little shoots. So they're full of flavor and they're one of these super foods you can get in the supermarkets now. They're full of goodness, so they are. And the last thing I'm gonna do, a little bit of coriander just sprinkled around the plate. And I think that is beautiful, fresh, gorgeous, homemade chicken goujons, full of flavor, really, really healthy, and a very quick dish from start to finish in 20 minutes. Ready, let's go. DCU has a well-deserved reputation for excellence in sport. And in 2006, it set up its sports academy to provide support for its elite GAA players and athletes. Many of the students play at inter-county level and the demands placed upon them are huge. The sports academy provides support in a number of areas, academic, nutrition and strength and conditioning. It also awards scholarships on the basis of performance and commitment at the university. I've come to meet Peter McGillicuddy, the executive chef in charge of the five canteens and restaurants on DCU's campus, and to cook something for the very health-conscious GEA players. Very, very welcome. I'd say now, look at how fit and healthy they look. I'm sure they're very, very particular about what they eat. They're well fed. <laughs> they're well fed. <laughs> so we're going to do a stir fry. Beef and rice stir fry, it's an all-in-one dish. Most of the dishes are really healthy. There's no butter, no cream. Take a curry that we do, for instance. It's just, you know, tomato-based spices and the protein that's going into it. But if you put 
bit of brown rice or sweet potato salad. It's a healthy dish. You have a lovely salad bar out there. That's a pick your own salad bar, so that's up to you what you want to put into it. So he does a good job here. He's here many years, were you telling me? Around 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> so, so lively. So we're going to just start fry. I've got this pan already hot. Going to add in the oil. What meat is that there you have? It's rump. Rump, And okay. it's shredded. We'll get a little bit of texture. Some rapeseed oil. It's good. And with the rapeseed oil, you get a higher smoke temperature. It's really, really good. This meat is cut really fine, so it cooks really quickly. What is the secret into doing a simple, quick stir fry? I have a paste here of chilies, ginger, and garlic. Mm -hmm. Whatever the meat is, that would be the flavour. With a stir fry, you probably have around 100 grams of meat, 100 grams of uncooked rice, and then you bulk it out with plenty of veg. What would you like me to do now? We show them how to do the, the Trinity first, which is chop the this. garlic, chili, and ginger. Ginger. So just chop that together. So this is the main flavouring in the in the stir fry, is it, Peter? Well, I have five spices as well. I don't have an awful lot of chili with this one, so it's more the five spice flavour than it is spicy. Okay. I just cook this off, right? That's the beef done now. All the juices come out of that. If I started putting in the veg and the rice, it would just make it soggy. And then I'm going to heat the, the pan back up again, and I'm going to put more oil in then to fry off all the veg. And on an average day, how many would you cook for here? Main course is around 1,500. See, when I'm chopping, I'm curving my fingers so the knife never touches. And of course, garlic is so good for you, isn't it? Yeah. You know, so good for your blood and for, for your health. It's very, very important. It's great for your social okay. life as well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a social life with all the training? I don't think so. <laughs> so we're going to chop the garlic now. Is that okay? Yeah. Could that be something you'd cook at home as stir fries? Would that be a big thing? Yeah. Something that's quick. We'd serve it with noodles or rice. I mean, we're serving it with brown rice, which yeah. is really interesting. Yeah. Very good. I think they're great at home, especially if you've got rice left over. All you have to do is fry up some chicken, <clears throat> some veggies, and you know, there you go. Yeah. You've got another meal. Is that okay for you? Yeah, that's perfect. And a wee bit of chilli. Usually you have to be careful, wear gloves, because, you know, if you get it in your hands or roll it and then it loosens the seeds. And then we just split this open here. Tell me about all the vegetables we're going to put in here. We've got peppers mixed mm -hmm. red and green. Yeah. Baby corns. Yeah. Uh, spring onions. Yes. Okay. And pak choy. It's like a Chinese cabbage. It cooks very, very quickly. Once the heat goes into it, it's cooked. But it's a, there's a lovely texture to it when it goes into the store fries. It gives it's a lovely, lovely crunch. And it can be grown in Ireland now, which is fantastic. Yeah. Have any of you used that Irish. before, guys? It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. What next, chef? I'm going to bang this okay. in. Put this in. Will I do a bit of pak choy? Please, yeah. The baby corns in. The baby corns are a hard vegetable, so they need a little bit more cooking than the rest, so I'll put them in first. I suppose the thing is to Peter doing a stir fry, have everything kind of uniform size. Yeah, hold yeah. Stand, Okay, yeah. perfect. So there are your I'm peppers. Put the peppers in now. Lovely. Will I do the other pak choy? Do this yeah. here for perfect, you. Perfect, yeah. yeah. So, now, we just let that cook away there, get the heat yeah. into it. I have spices here, the five spice. I wouldn't put that in too early, because any dry spice is going to stick to the bottom of the pan. Good you tip. Know, so you can get Thai seven spice, which is lovely as well. So Peter, what would be the most popular stir fry you serve here? The pork, belly of pork, but we cook it and then we press it, get all the fat out of it, dice that up, and we put that into it. Right, what's next? Put in the beef again. So you've sealed that off, all yeah. the lovely juice. See what he's doing? You waste nothing, the juice is going in. I'll put in the spice now. Gorgeous. Oh, that's loads. I'm also going to season it now. So it's using some sea salt and seasoning at the last minute, but also with spices to buy in small quantities. You don't need to be buying in big quantities. We'd buy in kilos, but for yourselves, buy small and buy regularly. Same with curry, spice and that's all that. Would you yeah. agree? No. We'll okay. put in our, our greens. Right? Give that to you. So that's just going in at the end, just for texture, say. Yeah, yeah brilliant. that's it. Looks lovely. Do you notice a lot more students now that have dietary requirements, gluten and... Most of the food that we do, believe it or not, again, it doesn't have gluten in it. Okay. We can't say gluten-free, okay. because it's uh, produced in an environment with gluten. But the curries, the joints, most of the vegetarians, I'd say 80% of the food is produced without gluten. Dairy, like if you're doing curries and stuff like that, we have a tendency not to put the dairy in, because again, it's... Another one so of the kind of tomato-based curry you do here, yeah, is it? Yeah, or okay. coconut. Coconut, you know, Even though coconut's an allergen. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a lot better than the dairy. This is just a bit of chopped coriander, Lovely. okay, to finish it off again. Hard to beat fresh herbs. So you notice the herbs going at the last minute, the pok choy, the spring onion, you're keeping all the colour, the nutrients and the flavour. Now, we good? That's us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't need any of these here? Yeah, this is just cashew nuts. Yeah. You can sprinkle them on, a bit of extra texture, okay. a little bit of protein. 
And then this is sweet chilli sauce if you want to be a little bit bold. And then this is just honey soya. Oh, nice. That's lovely. So one or the other, Yeah, right? it depends yeah. on what you want, just to give it a little kick. we we'll dish this up now. I'm going to go for the beef. Mmm. I love the five spice. Full of flavour, lovely texture. Ladies first. Three forks. I'm sure they just continue that. I hope you've enjoyed your stir fry, have you? Yeah. Can I give a big uh, thank you to our chef here, Peter? Absolute pleasure, yeah? Big round of applause, well done. Thank you for being in home, chef. No problem. Great to see you. you. Wish thank you continued success. Look for the Board B Equality Mark, because it looks after you. Look for the Board B Equality Mark, because it looks after you. I've got two lovely lamb recipes for you, and I'm using two different cuts of lamb. The first one, I'm using minced lamb. It's a lovely family favourite, it's a messe, which is a one tray dish into the oven, and it's done in 40 minutes. The second dish, I'm using lamb fillet. Lovely lean cut, going to turn into a lovely salad with a blue cheese, a mushroom, and mint dressing. So the first thing I need to do is get the messe done, and I'm using some parchment paper to save in the wash up. I'm going to prepare potatoes, courgettes, red onion. So I'm going to cut everything quite rustic. So the potatoes are just washed, we're going to cut them into nice big chunks, keeping the skin on. So you're keeping your roughage there. Don't be tempted to cut them too small. They'll be done in about 40 minutes. So I'm just going to sprinkle them just all over the tray. So spread them all out. Now courgettes. Cut them at an angle. Sprinkle this all over next. And then some red onion. Keep the actual root on because it keeps it all together. Cut it in half, holding the onion either side, keeping it flat. And then we're going to cut this into some wedges here. So that goes in there. And the next thing, we sprinkle some cherry little vine tomatoes. So they're all going to go in whole. Remove the little green stem on them. So that's the base. Now we're going to talk about the lamb. I'm using some quality assured lean minced lamb. I'm going to put it into a bowl. And we're going to make little pâtés, little burgers. You can shape them into meatballs, whatever you want. One full egg, which is just beaten. A little bit of oregano. Some wholemeal breadcrumbs into this. Tiny wee bit of black pepper and salt. So these can be made ahead and they're lovely. So just get your hands in there. It's the only easiest way to make this. If you don't have dried oregano, you can use a little bit of mint, flatly parsley, and of course, rosemary. It's a classic. I'm going to shape them. So I'm just going to roll them into small little, kind of like a ball, and then flatten them out like that. So just like a little patty. And then place them onto the tray. Try and have them all equal size and shape. The reason why they'll all cook the same. So we've got eight out of that. It really depends on the size that you make them. We need to just wash our hands, and I'm going to drizzle it then with a little bit of oil. So I'm using some rapeseed oil. Sprinkle of sea salt. So at this stage, this goes into the oven at 200 degrees, and it takes 40 minutes to cook. After 20 minutes, halfway through the cooking stage, you take it out, get a spoon, and just stir everything so it gets nice and evenly coated and golden brown. My next lamb dish is a lovely, sophisticated and delicious and healthy salad. I'm using a different cut of lamb, which is the fillet of lamb. 
So it's trimmed, it's lean, it's tender. It's one of my favorite cuts. We've got to sear this off. Heat your pan, a little bit of oil. When you're searing any kind of meat, pork, chicken, lamb, it doesn't matter, always bring it to room temperature, that's crucial. Tiny little bit of salt and some black pepper. So you season up just before it goes onto the pan. So make sure the pan is hot. I'm gonna keep that on a full heat. I'm gonna keep turning it. It's gonna cook lovely and golden brown. Flavor is gonna intensify, so keep it nice and high. While that's on, I'm gonna make a nice little dressing. I'm using some creme fraiche, a little bit of honey. Put everything into the saucepan. So this is a very interesting little dressing. So some creme fraiche. Sherry vinegar works really good with lamb. You can use balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar, but sherry is beautiful. Just a little splash of that. So that's the kind of sourness. Tiny little bit of honey. Roughly about a teaspoonful of honey there. Quite a big teaspoon. And then what we're gonna do is warm this up and I'm gonna crumble in a little bit of blue cheese. This is some cashew blue. There's lots of beautiful Irish blue cheeses. Wicklow blue, Bellingham blue, whichever one is local to you. I'm just gonna crumble this in here. So it works very well with the lamb. We serve this with green beans and tomatoes. That's a very interesting salad. If you think you've added too much vinegar, when you make this, you just readjust it with honey. I'm not gonna put salt in this because I think there's enough salt in the blue cheese, but also in the lamb too. And I'm gonna keep it a little bit extra so I can just crumble it around the plate. So let's just warm this through. Check the lamb, ready for turn. That beautiful caramelization tastes so good, so it does. A little bit of black pepper. Just to loosen it up, I'm gonna use some olive oil this time. Tiny little drizzle of that. And then we just whisk this through. You're just combining everything. This doesn't need really to boil very long. It cooks very, very quickly. So now the blue cheese is softened and melted into the dressing. Let's have a little look at the lamb. I've turned the lamb and I wanna keep it nice and pink. So I wanna take it off now, I don't wanna overcook it. We gotta let it rest. So just using the plate, I'm gonna wrap it in some tin foil and then I'm gonna press that just to keep it nice and warm. Just move it over there. On the same pan, because you have all the flavor from the lamb, we're gonna put in some mushrooms and slice them really thinly with some green beans, just from the garden here. Just simply just top them, put them into boiling water for literally 30 to 40 seconds, or you can steam them. Cold water, that means you blanch them. So they're cold, we just need to warm them up. So give everything a little shake, tiny little bit of black pepper. You just warm everything through. Mushrooms will absorb the oil, so I just need a tiny little drizzle more. There we go. Now, not really looking for too much color, just to get them cooked down, warm through the green beans. And then the last thing I need to do, chop a little bit of mint. This is gonna go into the dressing. I'm gonna use the bigger leaves for this. This is just some spearmint. You can use any kind of mint for this. Roll all this up here, and we're gonna cut it really nice and fine. Straight into the pot or it'll blow away. And then stir through the mint. Lovely fresh, I don't want it to overcook. I want it nice and green. And that's gonna be so delicious. So let's have a little look at the mushrooms. They look good. I'm gonna switch that off. And then we should be ready to serve up. Take the lamb. Just let that sit there for another minute. So I'm gonna use the tongs just to arrange the green beans, crisscross them. Then with the mushrooms, we're just gonna arrange them. Love these button mushrooms. Little cherry vine tomatoes, just simply cut them in half. So they're really nice and sweet. Now we need to get a little bit more blue cheese. I'm just gonna crumble this. Remember, I have it in the dressing already. Gives a lovely little bit of a kick. Not too much of it. And then we're gonna slice our lamb. And slice it nice and thin. Nice and pink. Perfectly. We're gonna arrange this just in the center of the plate. Overlap it and I'm gonna put the dressing on. Small amounts of the dressing just around the plate. And don't cover the lamb. Two final things, the salad leaves. These are all kind of lovely little micro greens growing here in Airfield. And then some flaked almonds. So just toast them on a dry pan, sprinkle that. And if you wish, you can drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. So there are two dishes using the very best of Irish lamb. My sophisticated salad using the lamb fillet and blue cheese finished with some green beans and flaked almonds and a blue cheese dressing. And then a family favorite, the messe. A one tray wonder, the lamb patties made with succulent lamb mince, sitting on a trivet of vegetables, using courgettes, potatoes, red onions, and tomatoes. Bring it to the table and finish it with some feta cheese and olives and let everyone tuck in.
Next time I meet gluten-free baker Denise O'Callaghan and find out how to make gluten-free pastry. And I cook some Irish hake with an Asian twist and a red Thai pork curry. Only the Board B Equality Mark ensures you know where your food comes from because it's independently checked at every stage.